Hi everybody! Today we're making soap. And this one's gonna be a little more on the complicated side, a little more complex. Um, there's quite a few ingredients and the, some of them are a little bit different so you have to really go out and on the internet to find these. But this is my husband's favorite soap. We're almost out. So that's why this one is being made today. So I call it clean as a whistle, but it's more along the lines of a deodorant soap than most of the soaps that I made. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Uh, usually don't have this many ingredients, but this one, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. And two things that really seem to help it be more like a deodorant soap is first of all we're have we're adding alum granules and this is something i had to order um this i it kind of helps with the dryness but that's what it looks like looks kind of like sugar or salt but it's not it's alum and I, because I've got so many of these ingredients sitting out, I keep them together. So I've already weighed that one out and I've set it right next to the container. That helps me keep things straight. And it's going to have lanolin. And you've probably heard of this. This comes out of sheep's wool. This is a humectant. It attracts moisture to your skin. So we don't want to dry your skin out and a lot of soap ingredients will tend to wash the natural oils away. So we're going to add lanolin and this helps hold the moisture in your skin. So this really just is an amazing soap. And if you've ever worked with lanolin, this is one goopy mess, but it's worth it. So we're going to be using that. We're going to be and some people won't like this, but you're free to switch it out as long as you go and recalculate everything on soap calc. I'm using lard, which I love lard in soaps. I think it makes a wonderful soap. It's hard. It tends to be white, but it just depends what else is in the soap. Um, it just is a good, nice soap. It's good for your skin. You know, I like it on my skin. I like the way it feels. I like the bubbles. I like using lard. So I'm using that. I'm using coconut oil and not fractionated. I don't use that. I use the 76 degree melting point coconut oil. And I actually use the good stuff. It's organic. That's what I like to use. I use olive oil cocoa butter, which is another wonderful ingredient for your skin. It helps hold on to the moisture and if you've ever smelled or felt real cocoa butter with nothing added, first of all it smells like chocolate, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but it also just, it's amazing and it's so good for your skin. I'm also going to use castor oil. And I buy this by the gallon. And the castor oil, you don't use very much in your soap, just a little bit. But it gives wonderful bubbles. It's just very good in a homemade soap. And I'm going to use, and you may never have heard of this one. I never had till I started making soaps. And it's called Sal Butter, S-A-L, Sal Butter. And it's from the Shorea tree. And it's pretty hard, but it's another one that's just so wonderful for your skin. So any of these can be switched out for other ingredients. And this is how you learn. With soap making, if you can't have or don't want to buy some specific ingredient, Go read about its qualities and then go find another ingredient and it's all the information's out there. Find another one that you can swap out 
and you'd be amazed at the how many ingredients there are and the wonderful properties they have and this one is definitely more exotic but I love using it so that's gonna go in there the sal butter and then I'm gonna use avocado oil so everything in this soap is good for your skin and that's the kind of soaps that I make so let's get started I'm gonna weigh out and always 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 weigh your ingredients when you're making soap do you really want to risk put too much lye in there and cause burns on your skin or do you want to waste all of these expensive ingredients because you didn't use enough lye it's not worth it use soap calc and that's soapcalc.net and I will leave a link for that and and what this does you put in how much percentage wise of each ingredient you want to use after saying okay this one's good for bubbles this one's good for your skin whatever you want to do you put your ingredients in there and how much percent you want and how much soap you want to make and it's not complicated it's very simple and it will come back and tell you exactly how much either in grams or ounces well it'll show you in pounds but that's not really helpful usually so usually ounces or grams it will show you both and it'll show you exactly how much to use of each ingredient. So I have already put in that I want to make two loaves of soap and I use silicone, silicone loaves, uh, molds. And how much each loaf will weigh and then Soap cap came back and told me exactly how much of everything to use. So I'm going to start with distilled water, and you want distilled water. Don't use out of the tap. If you have really, really good spring water, some people choose to use that. You just don't know what's in the water, even coming out of the ground. And my water comes out of our well, and it's in a whole house filter and I still don't use it because you don't know what's in the water and how it will react with the oils and with the lye. So I am starting with my distilled water and I'm going to do this in ounces but you can do ounces or grams and my formula calls for 27.2 ounces of water. So again, it's going to be weighed. Okay, so I got interrupted in the middle of that. So I'm going to, I poured that water into a measuring cup and I am going to weigh this again because again, we want this to be completely accurate. So we need 27.2 ounces. I don't know if you can see, probably. Let me see if I can turn it. There we go. I'm gonna tear the scale and make sure it's zero. So. Close enough, 27.25. The water amount can vary up and down depending. I have this at a 34% water, which I'm not going to get into all the details, but basically 
You need enough to make sure that the lye is fully dissolved, but you don't want to add too much water because it takes longer for the soap to cure because all that water has to evaporate out. So sometimes you go less, sometimes you go more. And what I'm gonna do now, I have to put on my safety gear, so. Time for goggles. Aren't they cute? And put some gloves on. Because now I'm going to weigh out the lye crystals. And I'm going to dissolve the lye over my range. Um, I will have the hood going because of the caustic fumes. You don't want to breathe this. You need to be extremely careful. Please check on the precautions yourself. Make sure you're doing it safely. Please. No pets underfoot. Make sure no children are around. It's not worth risking. Don't risk them. Don't take that chance. Okay, so I have my gloves, my goggles, and I'm going to weigh out the dry lye granules. I need 10.97 ounces. So I'm just gonna use this little plastic cup. I'm going to zero out my scale. And 10.97, and you wanna get this as close as possible. And I'm doing this because sometimes those little things get away from you. And I really don't want that. Okay, that went a little over. And all of these utensils that I use, I only use for soap. My scale, I can use for other things, but of course I clean it well in between each use. And I use stainless steel pots and pans, and same thing, they just get washed extremely well. So, ten point nine five. Let's see if I can get it to 9.7. It may not on this scale. Nope, it doesn't. So I'm just going to go with 9.5. I would rather go just a touch under than over at all. Because these measurements are totally based on how much sodium hydroxide it takes to fully saponify or turn into soap these oils after giving these exact numbers. So now I'm going to go over to the range and I'm going to pour the lye crystals into the water. Never, ever, ever, ever the other way around. The dry lye crystals get poured into the water and make sure you're using I prefer stainless steel and I got this from a restaurant supply used but you can use some plastics you can use glass but I wouldn't that there is such a chance that 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 the lye water could etch and break your glass container it's not worth it all of that alkaline would shatter the glass and there'd be glass and lye water everywhere and chance of burns. Just don't. Stainless steel or, as I said, there are certain types of plastic and you can see online which are safe. Um, I started out that way, but I chose, like I said, I got this very inexpensive at a restaurant supply and it is heavy duty. This thing's heavy. So 
Uh, this is all it's used for. It gets put away with my soap making materials and it just stays there. So let me bring you over to show you this. All right, this is a little bit noisy, but that's, uh, I need this range hood going to make sure that all the fumes are pulled out. So I'm going to pour the light crystals into the water and it's going to heat up almost instantly. All right, so I'm gonna pour this in and I stand back while I do it. I will try and get all of these out if possible, as much as possible, because, again, we want the measurements to be as exact as we can get them. And then we'll stir this up. We want the lye to totally dissolve. And again, I'm not putting my face anywhere near this. You don't want to breathe this. Even standing back, I'm feeling it. And this container got very, very hot. It's at 184 degrees in seconds. Okay, so we've got the lye mostly dissolved. Now I'm going to add these alum crystals, and I want them dissolved. So I'm going to stir them in. Alright, so now I'm going to walk away and leave this, actually I'm going to push it further back just for safety. I'm going to leave that until it has cooled to probably, um, I want it down to at least 110 degrees. So I'm going to just leave it sitting there and it's going to take a while. In the meantime, I'm going to measure out other ingredients and start melting some of the butters. So I'll bring you back in a little bit. Okay, I thought that I was recording and I obviously wasn't. So what I have here, I have in this large pot, I have weighed out 40 ounces of lard. And some people don't like lard and that's okay. You could maybe swap out palm oil although I'm not a big fan it's there's a lot of controversies around that um, but I like what the way lard makes soap I like what it turns out to be so I have 40 ounces of lard and then I put cocoa butter in here and this this is raw cocoa butter and it it's Oh, it smells so good. It's just like chocolate because it's cocoa butter. This is the fat from it. So I have 5.6 ounces of that. And what I'm doing is weighing out all of my solid ingredients first because I need to melt those. And then once they're melted, then I will add the other liquid oils such as the castor oil, olive oil, avocado oil, all of those. So let me reweigh this. This is the sal butter from the Sharia tree. And let me get the scale reset. So I need 5.6. Uh, let me make sure. No, I need 2.8 ounces of that. So I'm going to have to break that piece up. And this is this is a hard oil and the coconut cocoa butter is also very hard. Okay, 
let's weigh that one. Nope, that's a little too much. Why don't we try this? That's not enough. It's 2.4, 2.6. And I wish you could feel this. It feels so good. Two point eight. So we will add that to the pot now. And then we are going to melt these at a very, very low temperature. You don't want to change the way these oils act. And sometimes if you heat it at a high temperature, you are changing, I don't know, molecular or something or other. I'm not a scientist. But I do know that it can change the way they act and you don't want to change it. You want these wonderful properties. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> this is a benefit of making soap or lotions. You get all these wonderful ingredients direct and without any other things added to them. Okay, so I'm going to stop recording right now and I'm just going to put this on to heat very, very, very low because I don't want this hot when I get done heating it. I want it to be just warm. And then we will be adding the warm lye water to it once it comes down. I think I forgot to mention, because it wasn't recording, I also added 16 ounces of coconut oil. And I used the good stuff. You don't have to. You can use the cheaper types. I choose to use the organic. Um, but so far we have measured out 40 ounces of lard, 16 ounces of coconut oil, 5.6 ounces of cocoa butter, and 2.8 ounces of sal butter. So that's what's in it so far. And then we will add the liquid oils in a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and weigh out these other oils so I can get them out of my way. And be ready for the next step and that is we're going to add eight ounces of olive oil so make sure it's zeroed out The only thing I would caution you with olive oil is a lot of them out there are not actually olive oil and there's been a lot of articles written on that that they were tested and there are other things. So you do want pure olive oil. You don't need extra virgin for this. There's really no point. Um, I do like this because I think it's a good quality one. And we went a little over, that's okay. So we add the olive oil. And now I'm going to add 5.2 ounces of castor oil. And I think I'm gonna do that in this only because this stuff is really, really thick and sometimes a little difficult to make sure you don't pour out too much. So again, I buy castor oil in a gallon. And this is 
All right, 5.2 ounces. So I'm going to just add this right into these other oils. And again, these utensils that I'm using right now, these container, the measuring cup, spatulas, all of these are devoted strictly to soap making. And how I keep them separate is I have a, a second sink in my island. And when I'm making soap, all of these utensils go immediately into that sink. That way I make sure that I'm not putting these to use in my kitchen for cooking. So, put that over there. All right, and now I'm going to add 2.4 ounces of avocado oil. And I find this one at Costco, I think it's a good one, but any avocado oil and I'm just going to pour this right into the same bucket Okay, 2.4. So once my other oils get totally melted, then this will go and get mixed in with them. So I'll bring you back then. Okay, the lye water and the oils are almost at the same temperature. So now I'm going to weigh out the lanolin. And boy, is this part fun. This is thick, goopy stuff. You can see it didn't even want to open. So I need two ounces of this. bit over. There we go. Now I'm going to just microwave this to melt it because what we're going to do is once we have the lye water and the oils, they're going to get totally emulsified. Um, and that's when we call it trace. It's when you can run spatula across the top of your soap mixture and it leaves a mark for a minute. It doesn't immediately melt back in. So let me go microwave this to get it to a more liquid state. And then I'll bring you back for mixing this all together. All right, before I mix everything together, I'm going to go ahead and weigh out the essential oils. So that that is done. Um, and it'll just be, I can move this scale out of the way. So I have lemon and eucalyptus essential oils. And this is 0.85. I could add some more, 
but I don't like putting a whole lot, so I'm just going to do this. That's 0.85. And then the eucalyptus. That's going to be 0.45. And this gives it such a nice, fresh scent. So, okay, I'm going to move the scale out of the way. And bring the oils over. It's not real hot. It's a little warm, so I'm going to put a pad under it. But it, it's not bad at all. Okay, time to suit up. Got my goggles and my little spray bottle of vinegar. And my gloves. And I'm going to plug in my immersion blender that is solely used for soap. This one is never used for food. Only for soap, not anything else. Okay, so move essential oils out of the way the lanolin out of the way. And in the pot I have my lard, coconut oil, cocoa butter, and sal butter. Now, I'm going to get a paper towel to set this on. And in this bucket I've weighed out all of the liquid oils. And that's the olive oil, castor oil and avocado oil. So we're going to just add everything in there together. Scrape it because that castor oil is really thick and it all settled at the bottom. Besides that, I don't want this going down my drain, so the more I can get out, the better, because this will clog your drains. Okay, just give it a little stir, and I'm going to try and bring you close enough to see down in the pot. There we go. All right. Now I have my lye water mixture and I've let that come down to it's about 110 degrees. So, let me take this spatula and put it over here with the soap dishes. And then very, very carefully, I'm going to add that in. Again, get the lye utensils out of the way. And I don't know if you can see, it's now turned a little bit cloudy looking. And we're going to put this in there very carefully. We're going to shake this around because we don't want air bubbles that could cause this to splash up. So on low, we're just going to start combining it. I'm 
turn this light on. Maybe give it a little bit more light. And I encourage you to go back and watch my Castile soap recipe because I go into more depth of the process and how you do it. But we're going to alternate stirring and using the immersion blender because you don't want to burn up you don't want to burn up your immersion blender. And again, you're going to be very careful because the lye is still active and it will be active. This is a cold process soap. So the lye is going to be act active for maybe up to 24 hours. You, up to that time. And it even could be past it, but usually it's complete by then. You, you'd run the risk of getting a lye burn. So just use caution until you test and make sure that the lye is totally saponified. It's still very liquid here, you can tell. What we're looking for is more of a pudding kind of consistency. Well, I have cut out quite a bit of this process so that you didn't just have to watch me do this because it's pretty much the same throughout this whole step. And I also sped it up so you can see what I'm doing without having to watch, I don't know, it was, it was probably five or ten minutes at least of doing this. So just to speed things along, this is what I've done. Okay, so I don't know if you can see and I'm, the reason I'm doing this is I'm checking to make sure this isn't getting too hot. So when I lift this up, you see how it leaves faint marks on top. I'm not going to take this to a full trace right now because I'm going to add the lanolin. So I'm going to do that right now. And this is melted, but it's all almost going back, so it's thick, and I want to get that added. And this didn't take long. This lanolin went back to not solid, but it, it was starting to thicken back up very quickly. So we're going to get that added in. And we want to make sure it's thoroughly incorporated. And 
and this helped thicken it, which is one of the reasons I didn't want it to get too heavy a trace because I knew that the lanolin would thicken it also. Normally you don't have to worry about that because most soaps you aren't adding that. But this one, that's something you just have to watch out for. <laughs> believe I've got the lanolin all incorporated. I'm not seeing any sign of it or feeling it. So now we're going to add the essential oils. And once we do that and get them fully mixed in, then we're going to pour this in the molds. We're going to cover it up and let it sit for at least 24 hours. This is cold process and it needs that time to set up and saponify. So these are the essential oils, the lemon and eucalyptus that we weighed out already. And those two smell so good. It's such a fresh, clean smell. But you can use whatever you like. This is your soap. Oh, it smells beautiful. But again, they are oils. So you really want to make sure that they're fully incorporated because otherwise they're just going to sit on the top. And that's a big waste of essential oil because it'll just, all of the fragrance will evaporate out. And you want it down in that soap. So you mix it in well. you can see this is now nice and thick kind of like pudding so a little bit more and then we're going to pour this in the molds I think that's good now before you do anything else, disconnect your immersion blender. I have seen so many injuries of other soapers that got careless and did not take this apart before trying to scrape it or clean it. Just err on the side of caution. And again, you want to get as much of this off as possible, partly because anything you wash in your sink right now is still going to have fats in it. And those fats go down your drain, and it may not be immediate, but over time you can have a nice clog. So just a word of caution. Be sure. Get as much of this off as possible and because I have this additional sink I will spray most of this with vinegar because of it's acidic to kind of offset the alkalinity of the lye but I'm not going to wash these yet in fact I will take a paper towel and wipe off as much as I can off of everything before I leave it and that way you get as little as possible down your drain okay I'm gonna go get my molds and I'll be right back and show you how to do that now again notice I am still wearing goggles and gloves they are not coming off until I'm finished with this because 
the lie is still active. So now I have two molds, and these are silicone with a, a metal case that holds them in shape. And what I'm going to do is pour very carefully. And let me move this out of the way. We're not done with it. But... We want to shake it and try and remove any air bubbles. And then I'm going to scrape this down. Again, get as much out of your pots and utensils as you can because it's just a waste to waste this wonderful product but especially to keep it out of your drains Okay, you can see how it's really thickened up. And we just want to make sure it's all the way even as much as possible. And scrape the sides a little bit because it helps it release easier, I think. And you can make the tops beautiful if that's something that's important to you. But you know what? It really doesn't matter. Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to cover these with a towel because I want them to gel. They don't have to. It really doesn't affect anything. I just like the way it looks. So I'll put a box over the top and then I will cover it with a towel to hold the heat in because these are still pretty warm. So I will bring you back tomorrow when this is all done. Hey everybody. Okay, it's been more than 24 hours since I made my soap because yesterday we had church and then we took seven of the little roosters that were from the what I hatched in July and took them to get them ready for freezer camp. So we were busy all day taking care of that and getting them ready so that they will go in freezer camp today. So I didn't get to my soap yesterday. But it's been more than 24 hours. I have no concerns at all about the safety because it is fully soap. So this is my soap. 
This crazy light. Let me try something. See if that helps. I don't think that made it any better. But this is what it looks like. And so what I'm going to do is just loosen the sides. I think I'm going to turn that back off. It didn't help. So, and this is natural light. Okay, so I'm just going to loosen all the sides. And then just turn it upside down. And I just have a piece of parchment paper here. And then I'm just going to press on the bottom. And it's starting to release. And there, I believe it went. So. There is the soap loaf. And it's still sticky because it has been covered with the silicone mold. And not all soaps do this. This one does because of the lanolin. And so I think I'm going to let this dry well, a few hours at least. I'm going to turn it upside down, take the other one out of its mold, and I think I'm going to let them dry for a few hours before I cut it because I want nice soap slices. So I'm going to do that and then I'll bring you back later after this is set up, firmed up a little bit. It's set up, it's fully soap. It, it won't burn you, won't hurt you but it's definitely sticky still, gummy, because of the lanolin. And I want that to dry. The top is doesn't feel like that because it's been exposed to air. So I'm gonna take this one out, turn it upside down, let it just dry, and then I'll bring you back when it's ready to cut. Well, it's been a few hours, and these are now dried up. They, they feel like the top. They don't feel sticky, so they're ready to cut. So I'm going to turn these over. And we're going to get the soap cutter ready. Let's see, I think you'll see it best that way. And I store it with the wire loose because I don't want it ten under tension. So when I'm cutting the soap, I need to tighten it up. All right. So what I'm going to do is place the soap, soap loaf there. And I think I'm going to do it on its side. All right, and I think you could see that best this way. And let's see, no, I want it about there. And then it slices right through. So the inside of the soap looks like the outside, and it smells so good with the lemon and eucalyptus. So there's the first bar. And I found some, a soap like this because it's a little gummy inside. I let it, I wiped the blade because you don't want it gumming up. So just go through and slice all these up. And 
and I won this soap cutter. I was so excited. So there we go. One loaf makes nine nice bars of soap. They're around four ounces each, and these this is a nice size bar of soap. Now what I do is I'm going to put this in a bin that has good air ventilation, and I'm going to let it dry out. And I want this to dry out at least 30 days. Um, it's fully cured. Like I said, we tested the pH. The pH is good. It's usable right now. But, if you can see how soft I can press with my finger. That means this thing is going to wash away down your drain very quickly. So, when I was talking about how much water to use in the formula, this is why, because the more water you use, the more water has to evaporate out of it while it cures. And curing is mostly dehydrating it. It's um, the first 24 hours, like I said, that's to make sure all the lye is no longer active. But after that, it's for the soap to harden, for the water to come out of it, and it usually changes the feel of the soap and the suds. Don't ask me why. That's just what it does. So I will put this aside for a month, and then we will start using it. And this is Brian's favorite soap, and I love it too because the lanolin just makes it wonderful. It attracts the moisture to your skin. It holds the moisture but you still feel fresh. You don't, you know, it, it's not oily. It's nothing like that. It's just nice soap. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. And if nothing else, look and see what are in those bars that you buy at the store because most of them are not actually soap. They are detergents. And so there's a lot of stuff in there that maybe isn't great for your skin. Everything in this is good for your skin. So I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll talk again soon.